to our final presentation by uh, Yu Hao Kong. And he is going to talk about a review, um, uh, a review and synthesis of recent GeoAI research for cartography. And he has co-authors, oh, well, Yu Hao and his co-authors are all from the Department of Ge Geography at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you, Professor Yao. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Yu Hao Kang. I'm currently a PhD candidate at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And it's my great pleasure to present uh, a review and a synthesis of recent GeoAI research for cartography, methods, applications, and uh, ethics. I want to thank you for the first presenter and third presenter as my work is also related, highly relevant to yours, and you have already introduced some advanced GeoAI approaches for map generalization. Um, the past decades have already witnessed the booming of artificial intelligence, AI, from computer vision using deep learning to detect objects from images, and to AlphaGo um, using deep learning and reinforcement learning uh, which um, beats human in the Go game for the first time. GeoAI, the integration of geospatial studies and AI, have been widely used to solve a series of geographic tasks, ranging from spatial reasoning, uh, knowledge discovery, and also uh, human environment uh, interaction modeling. Cartographers also made efforts to integrate to use GeoAI to solve a set of cartographic tasks. For example, this is an example map that utilizes deep learning to transfer the map styles from a historical map styles to a modern topographic map in New York City. So the GeoAI indeed brings some opportunities. And you may ask uh, how or what GeoAI can do for the um, can be used for cartography. And uh, are there any big picture uh, questions in this field in using GeoAI for cartography? So here, uh, adopted by another moonshot um, question proposed in another review uh, in back to 2020 published on IAGIS, can we develop an artificial GIS analyst that passes a domain-specific Turing test by 2030? Here, we also propose another big question uh, for specifically uh, for GeoAI for cartography. Can we develop an artificial cartographer assistant that cartographers are no longer focused on the usage of cartographic tools and tech uh, technical details, uh, but more on artistic map creation? So here, I first uh, would uh, summarize and uh, conducted a literature review um, to see what's the current progress of GeoAI for cartography. Um, I conducted a literature review and retrieved 82 papers from scopers. And I summarized and I summarized several aspects of uh, GeoAI for cartography. But due to the time limit, I will only focus on two aspects. Uh, GeoAI models for different uh, data formats and the cartographic tasks. And also, I will in introduce several, propose several ethical concerns of GeoAI. So there are, uh, as you know, there are two different um, data formats of cartographic data, vector data and also raster data. So for vector data, um, it can represent geographic objects, including its attribute and geometry. So there have been four kinds of GeoAI approaches that have been used to model the geographic objects or the vector fo format data, including decision tree, uh, like uh, Elizabeth just uh, mentioned, uh, and a knowledge graph, graph convolutional neural network, and reinforcement learning. So all of these four, uh, why they are appropriate for vector data? Because they can either model the geographic object, or they can focus on the attribute or geometry. So that, that's why they are used. The other data format refers to the raster uh, map, raster format data. So the raster map can be stored in images. So which means if a deep learning, a, uh, a deep learning approach or a GeoAI approach uh, um, can be used to model the raster 
uh, maps or, uh, or images, then it is appropriate for raster format data. There are two major um, approaches used for raster format data, including the convolutional neural network and the generative adversarial network, GANs. So these two have been frequently used for computer vision to model uh, for the image processing. After talking about the two um, data formats and uh, the approaches, here I would like to introduce several applications. And I will uh, use several examples to help illustrate these applications. The first one refers to map generalization, which is a very classic topic. And uh, uh, about, uh, about half of the papers that I reviewed focus on this specific task. For map generalization, um, there have been, the GOAI have been used to uh, serve as several operators of generalization, such as building simplification, uh, river smooth, and also like the first presenter just presented the contour uh, lines and, uh, and also the point, the human settlement selection. And there are four methods used, including the decision tree, um, convolutional neural network, CNN, uh, generative adversarial network, and a graph convolutional neural network. The second one, uh, application, refers to the typography, or those text in maps. Um, I think that um, that person who proposed another question related to task, to extract the text. Um, GOA have been used to, uh, to solve tasks related to typography such as automatically place labels. Uh, for example, uh, where is the best place to put an uh, annotation? And the next, uh, the other task refers to uh, automatically generate map labels or to extract uh, some text annotations from the maps. So for this kind of application, um, generative adversarial network, convolutional neural network, and reinforcement learnings have been used. The next one refers to map design and uh, aesthetics. So map design was thought condense cartographers' experience and, ca uh, and cartographers' innovative and creative uh, ideas. And the machines were thought cannot produce artistic styles and artistic products. But now, it is possible um, for GOAI to even design some artistic products, although still at the early stage. For example, uh, look at the left three figures. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this was a paper that um, I published back to 2019 to transfer the map styles using generative adversarial networks. So given uh, we can transfer the map styles from an existing map, such as Google Map, uh, OpenStreetMap, transfer their map styles to another map, even without any map styles. And similarly, um, Professor, Zhao, uh, Professor Zhao's team um, proposed the concept deepfake geography to show that uh, GeoAI can even generate fake images, uh, which also echoed Professor uh, Mamona's how to lie with maps to show uh, how GeoAI can produce, can, can lie with maps. And for this specific category, generative adversarial networks and the convolutional neural networks, these two approaches have been widely used. The next application refers to map reading, uh, and uh, there are two tasks. The first one, map object detection, such as extract uh, points, polylines, and polygons from raster maps or historical maps directly. Here, uh, convolutional neural network and graph convolutional neural network are, are used. For map reading, there is another task called map content reference. Given an image, given a map, how can machine know where is the map? For example, uh, here I show several maps that the GOAI models can identify. So we, what regions are these maps? And uh, throughout this, uh, throughout the map content reference, the GOAI can even compare or find out similar regions. For example, the, look at the uh, two figures on the bottom. Uh, they look similar from topographic maps because 
they both have water body and also road networks. So for this specific task, convolutional neural network have been used. The last application refers to cartographic knowledge representation. Um, if we can summarize the cartographic knowledge, we can even produce some question and answering um, system to support the cartographic reasoning. Uh, here, knowledge graph has been used to summarize the cartographic knowledge. Um, here, I have already talked about several applications. Um, and as you can see, that GOI indeed uh, brought several opportunities uh, for cartographers to solve a serious cartographic tasks, either improve the performance of traditional methods, or uh, the machines can even um, finish some tasks that were thought only cartographers can finish. Uh, but as a GI scientist, I should not only focus on those opportunities brought by GeoAI, but I should also focus on several concerns, ethical concerns. But unfortunately, there have been a lot of discussions for that. So here I list several ethics in GeoAI for cartography. The first one is commodification. So should we charge the data sets, the visual styles, and generalization outputs produced by, by GeoAI? These are also property, uh, intellectual property, but researcher, researchers hope, uh, prefer a, a, a open source uh, atmosphere. Um, but they are intellectual property, so we may need to charge. But if we charge, then because GOAI tools are uh, mainly owned by developed countries, so maybe people from developing countries may cannot afford that. And it also derived another point, the copyright and the responsibility issue. Like, uh, assume you have a set of geographic data and you input into the machine learning, the GOI, and the output is a fancy map, is a map with a lot of artistic styles. So who should uh, have the copyright? And uh, what if the GOI uh, produce some unethical maps? So who should be responsible for that unethical maps? So these points should be discussed. The second one refers to bias. Um, it is necessary to toward trustworthy cartographic results uh, with GeoAI by performing like evaluation and also data quality uh, checking. And I want to echo um, what um, Tim Trainer discussed, uh, proposed uh, during the yesterday's workshop. He said, uh, if there is perfect map, then we don't need, uh, there is perfect data, then we don't need to map. So that means the map data is always, always has some um, bias, always have in, inaccurate data. So how we deal with this biased data, such as spatial bias, population bias. So it may, it might be possible or very, uh, it, it might be possible that we train another AI only to solve to deal with the biased data, to perform the evaluation and the data quality checking. Um, okay. The last one refers to the interpretability uh, because deep learning, they are black box, so we don't know uh, how it works, but anyway, it just works and produce the very fancy maps. Uh, so it is necessary to help her to, uh, to ask the researchers to continue interpret the results of um, deep learning. Uh, so that is also another issue. Here, uh, here are the discussions of this paper. I still propose several questions. Why should we use GOAI for cartography? And when uh, we may not need to use GOAI. And second, um, how to integrate cartographers' experience into GOAI for cartography? It is still necessary in guiding the development of GOAI. The last one uh, is what would be the big picture of GOI in, uh, for cartography? Uh, so these are just open questions and I welcome all kinds of feedbacks. And also back to the ethical concerns, uh, I also welcome all kinds of feedbacks because uh, even several like negative, uh, negative one and uh, criticize because if we can discuss this, then we can um, make sure that the GOI can produce ethical results. And, the, uh, and at the end of this presentation, I would like to showcase another project 
uh, to promote the global cartography and GIS education. So this is a um, project that's led by me. Um, we summarized over 400 cartography and GIS related programs such as urban planning, remote sensing in over 70 countries or regions across the world. It might be the largest database of GIS and cartography programs in the world. For example, we summarize the program information, like as you can see, my um, UW Medicine, and we also summarize the research interests of all professors. We have Twitter, YouTube, and uh, here is a website. You can scan the uh, barcode to visit our website to see this um, wonderful database. I hope this resource can benefit, can promote the global GIS and cartography education. That's all. Thank you. I welcome all kinds of questions. Thank you. Nice review and interesting discussions. Is there any comments, feedback? Just, yeah. Yeah, um, actually, I'm quite interested in the generative adversary network. And uh, um, I think there are some um, products like when you describe some words and the, the artificial intelligence were used by GAN to generate some artificial pictures or artwork, which is quite controversial. But um, my question is like, how can we measure this map generated by AI is perfect. Like what kind of measurement we are going to say, this is a good map style and this is a good map. Because I also use GAN to generate some fake data and to input as um, um, features of the landslide prediction model. The measurement for me seems much easier because we only count accuracy, count FE score. But when it comes to artist style, it seems much more complex. Yeah, thanks for your question. That is also one big issue um, that I would like to discuss with you. So uh, as I just mentioned, I think it is it may um, we may need to develop another kind of GeoAI models specifically focus on to evaluate those maps. And also it is necessary to bring cartographers experience in developing those evaluation models uh, so that um, the cartographers experience are still very valuable in guiding the GeoAI model to evaluate those maps. And we cartographers should teach the those machines, you know, uh, what are the correct maps? What are the good maps? What are the ethical maps? And what some what are the unethical maps? So I think that is very necessary in the future development of trustworthy GeoAI for cartography. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Another question by Li Chu. Thank you very much for your inspiring uh, talk and overview about uh, what uh, geo. AI could do, we could imagine that someday Geo, Geo AI is providing better mapping tools and uh, providing better mapping styling. And therefore, <laughs> I try to reflect on your uh, question of what would be the big picture of uh, Geo AI for cartography. Maybe it will make uh, maps and uh, cartography disappear. And this is a kind of analog to the car industry. People are beginning to, to think uh, or rethink. Uh, maybe we need to shift our focus from a map and a mapping to the affordances of map and mapping, like shifting the focus from car to mobility. So we, we don't have to be panicked or very sad if someday there are no maps or no mapping tools, but the affordances of cartography and maps will exist because there is forever a demand. So I do not have yet any kind of answers, but a kind of thinking model. Let's shift our focus a little bit away from what we love whole, whole life. Yeah. Yes, thank you for your comment. That was good. Uh, Li Chu, yeah, can I jump in? 
that a little bit. Um, I think that's very inspiring. Not working. Why not? Okay, that's uh, inspiring comments. Um, but I like at the very beginning. I, I remember you how uh, quoted someone saying, "Well, let's get rid of the." the hard part and focus on the design part. What cartography is a combination uh, of science and uh, art and science, right? Focus on the art so we can focus on, art, on the arts part of it and the science part can be taken over by machine learning. I guess that's the quote, right? Yes, exactly. And it also reminds me that although these GeoAI uh, tools look fancy, currently it's they are still at the early stage, and at, at the current stage, they can they cannot produce um, those art, art styles that didn't exist. They can only like, combine different styles that exist now, but they cannot produce real or uh, those styles that haven't existed before. But it's still the current stage. We don't know what it, or what happened like after fifty years. Wonderful. Those are really nice discussions. Are we having more questions, discussions, comments? Well, if not, I guess our session is concluded. Thank you so much, everyone, all the presenters. Let's give a round of applause.